I am delighted to welcome uh, Governor Evers and Lieutenant Governor Mandela and uh, Senator Chris Taylor is with us as well um, here to the Wisconsin Institutes of Discovery building. Um, this is sort of the center of interdisciplinary science on campus and we've been doing a tour um, showing some of the really way cool science stuff that is happening in some of the labs and with some of the people here. Um, I particularly want to thank the governor for the budget that he has proposed. It's a budget that's really going to let this university move forward. We have a three-part mission that is both education, innovation, and outreach. This building represents all three of that, and um, the governor's budget in a whole variety of ways is designed to help us move forward in all three of those ways. So I want to thank him for what he has proposed. I'll be interested in seeing the discussion as things move forward. I'm always delighted to have him on campus, and I will turn the podium over to him. Thanks thank you, lot, Governor Chancellor. Thanks, Chancellor. Yeah. It's great to be here today. This is, this is one of those special places uh, at the University of Wisconsin campus that uh, I love to come to. Uh, I am a graduate of here, three degrees from University of Wisconsin-Madison. And this place is special for several reasons. But one of them, uh, Lieutenant Governor Barnes and I talk often about connecting the dots and how important it is to do that in order to solve big problems that the state of Wisconsin has, whether it's issues around agriculture, criminal justice reform, health care, all those things don't exist in a, in a, in a silo. They, 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 these, these problems will be solved by people working together across disciplines. And that's what this space does. And uh, uh, the people in this space are just extraordinarily talented people that are working on the problems of the day. Uh, for example, I'll give, give you a quick one, is a, uh, a couple of, of scientists who specialize in policy, specialize, frankly, in policy as it relates to uh, forensic science and, and what that means for the criminal justice system and what it may need, need to be, how it need, may need to be changed in the future because of what we know about the uh, science around forensics. That kind of work could not happen without making sure that people do connect the dots, bringing people together from different disciplines. So it's such an honor to be here today and uh, to see the good work that's going on. And uh, we're seeing uh, you know, young people from Johnson Creek and, uh, and Lake Mills and Jefferson are here today to visit, to kind of get the idea of what this is all about. So it's a great place to be, and uh, I'm happy to be here, and I'll be glad to answer, uh, Lieutenant Governor and I will be glad to answer any questions you might have. Yes, I've known Dawn for, for several years, and uh, uh, I do stand behind her. The, uh, uh, when she, it was investigated, that incident, they found the charges to be unsubstantiated, and she was never, uh, uh, she's never found guilty of anything, and she's worked hard. She was part of the University of Wisconsin-Madison system before she came to work at the Department of Public Instruction. She's an extraordinary human being, and I do stand behind her. And I, and I look forward to having her having the opportunity to, uh, uh, to talk to the legislators who may have concerns. Were you aware of the charge when you hired her at DPI? Yes. Yeah, and not at the DPI. I, I, I learned of this before, uh, during the vetting process for um, the governor's office. Other questions for the day? Would you mind talking a little bit more? I know you had mentioned um, during that meeting of the minds about changing mindset more so than doing more with funding. And I was hoping you could maybe speak to that a little bit. Yeah. I, the, uh, the legislature and policymaker, legislature of the governor's office and other policymakers in the state have this wonderful opportunity all across the state, but in particular here in Madison, to utilize uh, the University of Wisconsin, uh, Madison, and the system in general to solve problems. It's not that we have a shortage of problems, and uh, I think many times we, we jump to a conclusion without really knowing the science behind it and, and, uh, and, and, the, and the, the studied thought that has gone into some of these issues that exists on our campuses. So yes, we, we, we need to make sure that we value science and value the scientific process where we pose hypotheses and answer those hypotheses. And I know that that may sound like foreign language to uh, policymakers, but that's, that's what we have to do. That's why, that's why we, um, we have leapfrogged, frankly, in, in, in big ways to having the University of Wisconsin system 
colleges and, and, and people that work there are working with businesses all across the state to change their practices. I'm hopeful that we can rely on the University of Wisconsin system and especially UW-Madison and this, this institution to help solve problems, to help us connect the dots and understand the policy ramifications of, of, uh, of, of the issues that are, that are facing us. University has a role to play. It used to play a huge role. When, when, uh, when, when problems uh, rise, arose in the state, legislators looked and, and governors looked to the University of Wisconsin for solutions. Stem cell is a good example of that. We need to continue, we need to reinvigorate that and rebuild those those bridges. If you had to prioritize what in your budget you know must appear in the Republicans' budget for you uh, not to, to be it? Well, it's certainly the things I, I ran on are, are critically important. You know, whether we're whether we're talking about education, K through twelve, higher education, those are those are critically important components as well as transportation and as well as health care. Now I know there's some differences of opinion among Republicans and Democrats on these issues, but I think, I think all of us just need to let the dust settle a little bit. I had a budget that uh, we proposed recently that uh, asked for some major investments in those areas, and, and uh, I, I would hate to be put in the position, and I don't think the legislature wants to be in that position of the governor vetoing an entire budget. I, I I will do that if the budget is extraordinarily uh, bad for our, our state. But I, I'm confident that you know the people of Wisconsin um, voiced their opinion last November, and subsequent to that, the uh, lieutenant governor and I have been out uh, talking to people. They helped people of Wisconsin helped us build these budgets uh, that um, uh, that we that we proposed. So I, I feel confident. In the end of the day, we'll have a good budget and a good result for the people of Wisconsin. You know, any any time something like this happens, uh, a change in administration or a new budget, there's going to be a lot of political posturing and huffing and puffing, but uh, at, at the end of the day we have to find common ground and I look forward to doing that. I'm, I didn't hear I, the whole question. We'll, we'll, meet, we'll meet with them as often as we need, need to. I'm not sure we need to schedule uh, you know, Tuesday morning at 10 o'clock every week, but the, the bottom line is we have to have good conversations and we have to involve uh, our staff members in those conversations so that uh, we, we truly have uh, a good dialogue going. But you know, we have to get the budget in, and, uh, budget in place. We, the Joint Finance Committee has to do their thing. So while, while all that's happening, I'm sure we'll be having discussions with them. They're reasonable people. Uh, I understand there's differences of opinion, but you know, Republicans and Democrats all want good schools, good roads, and adequate and affordable health care. And uh, we just have to find a way to do it. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Have a good day.